Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. The Online Success Journey continues episode 321. Every guest shares the path that took them to success. So you'll want to subscribe right now and ensure you'll never miss a journey. I post at least one journey each week and I would love for you to join me. Joining us today is Angela K. Taylor, mostly known for creating the productive flow mastery. Her mission is to help ambitious, purpose-driven entrepreneurs and sales professionals overcome stress and chaos so they can create the life and business they want. Hello, Angela. Hi, Patience. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. My audience are excited to hear your story, but just start by telling us one thing we are going to learn from you today that will help us on our journey to success. Yeah, so I'd say the biggest thing that I have to share with everyone is that productivity is truly rooted in emotion. How you feel on the inside determines how you perform out in the world. I can't wait to hear more about that. But (laughs) let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my audience a little bit about your background, what you did before you started your business? Oh, sure. Yeah, so I actually started out... um, Career-wise, in retail sales when I was 14 years old, um, did that uh, commission-based sales until I was 19, at which point I started getting involved in real estate investing. So I bought my first house when I was 19. By the time I was 22, I owned four homes, had a real estate license, and was living in one house and managing the other three as rental properties. And it was at that point that I realized I wanted to get involved in uh, the real estate industry and uh, sell real estate, residential real estate as a realtor. And so what I did uh, was I started working as a realtor. I enjoyed it. I did well with it. But I realized that I was the person in the office that everyone was going to for advice, tips. Um, I was pretty tech savvy uh, even back then. And this was um, really the internet was just coming out and uh, the internet was not quite there yet. We were on dial up and we had AOL and CompuServe. So that gives you an idea. Um, But I was pretty tech savvy even back then and uh, a lot of creative ideas for marketing. And so I became that person everybody would go to. And I realized that I really enjoyed working with the real estate agents more so than I did with buyers and sellers. So I started a marketing business where I was working for realtors Uh, locally at first and then branched out to working with realtors all over the country. And my business grew so quickly that I ended up having 10 people working for me who were doing all of the actual work. And I was just sitting on the phone with the realtors, kind of walking them through the problems that they were having and then making suggestions. And I realized that what I was doing was more coaching and consulting than it was customer service. And so I shut down the marketing side of the business and just began uh, working as a coaching consultant. And that was almost 19 years ago. I've been doing it ever since. Why do you do what you do? Well, you know, a lot of it boils down to understanding that, you know, everybody wants to build their business. Everyone wants to grow and expand and make more money. And, and it's not always about the money. It's about what the money is going to do for you in your life and what type of thing that your business does to support and serve others. And a lot of the people that I work with are very heart centered. They, they have, they've had something in their lives that has been some sort of trauma or, Um, you know, emotional upset, something that's created a problem in their life. And they had to work through it and heal that problem. And they realized that whatever they did to heal that problem, they now want to help others with. And so I'm really no exception to that. Because when, when I was a kid, I had great parents in the sense that they had great intentions and were very well-meaning, but they did a lot of things that created a lot of emotional trauma for me, unintentionally, but it was still there. 
And so I grew up thinking that there was something wrong with me, that I was not good enough, that I was not worthy, I was not deserving, and that I wasn't ever going to be able to make anything of myself because of who I was, because I was very different from both of my parents. And it was that that was holding me back not my actual capabilities or or anything else. And when I started seeing that same thing in my clients and I started realizing that I was compensating for that trauma by keeping my life in chaos, my life had been in chaos as a child. And so I was keeping that around me because it was the, the only thing that made me feel any sense of normalcy. And that structure and organization was something that I almost was resentful of. I felt like if I have this, and everything is okay, then something else bad might happen. And this was all happening in my subconscious. But as I started to heal my past and move through all of the, what I'm going to describe to you as the four elements of productivity, I realized that I was able to fix everything. And I could have structure. I could have balance. I could have literally everything that I ever wanted and have it feel amazing, not scary, not traumatic, not anything including really good relationships with my parents. And so what I realized was that these other people that I was working with, they were all having the same issues. And traditional productivity coaching has always been about punishment and rewards. Let's set some goals. Let's create a reward if you do it. Let's create a punishment if you don't. And then that's going to drive you further. And the problem is, is that for heart-centered individuals that are out there to serve others, that doesn't work. It never works, not for those people. And so I started digging in deeper to this and finding that what really did work was understanding that they were worthy, that they were deserving, and that they needed to have what they truly wanted in life so that they could do the work that was going to change lives. And so when I started going deeper into, tell me about your childhood, tell me about how you're eating, tell me about how you move your body on a regular basis. Tell me about what the stress looks like in your life. Tell me about what your home looks like. How organized is it or how how crazy and chaotic is it? That's when I started tapping into the fact that they were so focused on time management and finding a focus in their business that they didn't understand that their emotions and their energy levels were contributing to their disorganization and their, 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 their um, chaos. And that all of this was coming from their life experiences. That is something new. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it is. (laughs) Wow, thank you for sharing. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's put Iman aside. Mm -hmm. How do you know you are successful? Well, you know, I really base my success on the success of my clients. You know, are my clients getting what they need? Are they able to create the life that they want? How many breakthroughs are they having? How often and and how soon? And I also would say that the success that I have that I really see that is really amazing to me is when I see my clients growing, succeeding. I see them doing the things that they love. I, I have one client that, you know, when she first reached out to me, she was successful, but struggling, hustling to get there every day. She was, you know, fighting that sense of, I need to show up for my family and I also have to show up for my job. And my job is the most important right now because it's what's going to keep a roof over my family's head and keep food in their bellies, right? So I've got to push, push, hustle, hustle. I'm going to make this happen. And she was just paycheck to paycheck because there was so much chaos and, and no structure at all. And to see her go from that with no nothing in savings, just literally paycheck to paycheck, to see her go from all of that to having a great relationship with her husband and her kids, to being able to take vacations literally every quarter, to seeing her with over six figures in in a a bank account and having so much business coming in that she doesn't even have to be the one who does that business anymore. That now she's been freed up to actually create new structures and levels of business for herself while all of her leads are coming in and she has people that are running those for her. That's successful. That's amazing. And she's so happy and balanced. And and she was able to renovate her whole house that she'd been sitting on for years. 
And it's things like that, that I can look at and say, yes, I'm doing something right because our time together helped her create that. So to me, that's, that's where I see the success. Tell my audience about the magic moment. The day suddenly all went right for you. <laughs> you know, um, I'll tell you there was a magic moment, but it wasn't when everything went right. It was when I decided that everything was going to be okay. And it was at that moment that I realized that the world wasn't working against me. I didn't have to fight, that I could just flow and that I could find what I wanted, that I was safe, I was secure, and anything that I needed would come to me. And that I, it would come to me because no matter what happened around me, I'd already survived so much. I knew how to take care of myself. I was resilient and I could cope with whatever happened. And so it was in that moment that everything turned around. And that's when I literally had decided that I was going to shut my business down because the real estate market at that point had tanked. Um, I was only working with real estate agents at that point, which that's no longer the case, but then it was. And the real estate market had completely crumbled in the US. And so it was a matter of figuring out what I was going to do. I was at that point, a single mom with two kids that were little, they were five and two. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And so I decided, you know, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to get a degree in counseling. I'll be a therapist. I will um, get a, a job that I could do with my eyes closed so I can focus on school and my kids. And I'm going to just make my life simple. And it was at that point when I got that next job that, and I had enrolled in school, that everything started to come together. And I, I met a man who was a single father. He had two kids also very young and we instantly connected, uh, decided we were going to move in together. And my dad calls me and says, Hey, you know, I've, I've got that house um, that's been sitting empty. It needs some work, but um, I need to sell it. And I was wondering if you could help me. And I said, that house that's five minutes from me, that's five bedrooms, three baths and has a home office. He said, yeah, I said, can I have it? And he said, sure, pay the mortgage at $600 a month. I said, what? <laughs> and he literally drove up the next day and handed us the keys. And we got married and <laughs> we raised our four kids and we homeschooled all the kids. And I didn't shut my business down. My business took off in a positive, such a positive direction. And I, I let go of the, of enrolling in school, back in school. And I let go of that job and everything just got amazing. And then two years later, we had a baby and it was just, everything started to turn around. But it didn't happen until I made the decision that it was going to happen, until I decided that I deserved it, until I decided I was going to allow that into my life. So are you now telling us that some of us, we are really sabotaging ourselves, not allowing good things to happen in our lives? Well, you know what? It's not that we are intentionally doing that. It's, you know, it's just saying that there's, you know, when we're in this space of, expectation. Okay. Our expectation is based on our past experiences. So it, whatever you were born into, if you were born into perfect happiness and balance and structure, then everything feels good and everything works out and you feel that's your expectation. So when you do anything, you're, you're not seeing the risk in it because everything works out for you. Everything's beautiful. But when you grow up in an environment where everything is risky, everything feels unsafe, unsecure, insecure, and, and you don't feel like anything will ever work out for you because nothing ever has, then there's an expectation that's created that says bad things are going to happen to me. And no matter what I do, that's what's going to happen. And so it's, it's, it's nothing intentional. It's nothing that says we have to self-sabotage, but if something good starts to happen, we're almost on edge about it. It's like feeling um, like, it, you know, if something good happens, well, it can't, it can't stay like that, right? Like, that's not what life looks like. We can't, we're, we're waiting for something really bad to happen to balance out that good thing that happened. And, and we don't know how to create 
expectation of, of happiness. We don't know how to create an expectation of, of joy or of everything just working out. So it's not that we're purposefully blocking it or trying to not allow that or even saying, I don't want that, you know, don't give me all that good stuff. That's not for me. <laughs> you know, we want all the good stuff and we crave it desperately, but we don't know how to accept it. And because we've never had it. And that is the problem that we run into. And so, you know, I call the uh, four elements of productivity. I, I, I've described this as the four elements of productivity because you know, we, when we're thinking about wanting to build something, wanting to create something, wanting to do something, something big, something that changes our lives or changes the lives of others, right? We think in terms of what is it going to be? How am I going to earn money? How am I going to support these people? And, and that's a focus. And we get that. We understand that, that we need to have a focus to build anything. We need to know what it is. And then we say, okay, well, I've got all these other responsibilities and chores and all these other things I have to do. So I have to figure out when am I going to do this? And that's time management, right? And so we, we really understand, everybody does, that productivity is a combination of focus and time management. We get that. But what we don't get is how to create focus in our lives or how to really manage our time so that we don't get overwhelmed, we don't burn out, we don't stress, we don't feel like we're just running around with chaos everywhere, that we actually feel balanced and alive every day. And that's where our emotions and energy come in. And I always say that productivity is rooted in emotion because it's, it's our emotions that drive how we perform. And that's because if you think in terms of, you know, if, if you have a day where you ate a lot of junk food, you know, and a lot of sugar, and maybe you had a lot of alcohol, you know, and it was just a crazy party, right? And you had an amazing time. But the next day you wake up, how are you going to feel? Pretty good. <laughs> yes, really terrible, right? So if you wake up like that, how do you think you're going to manage your time that next day? I think you will have to call it a Right? Day. And you're not going to be able to focus at all, Right. But the thing is, is that so many of us eat and drink and use our time based on how we feel. If we're stressed out and overwhelmed, we're more likely to reach for food out of comfort than we are out of fuel. We're more likely to reach for alcohol or something that's going to numb our senses because we need to recover. We feel like I'm so drained. I can't take anymore. I don't want to listen anymore. I don't want to feel anymore. I just want everything to stop so I can breathe. And I see so many people just, it, it could be as simple as just reaching for a glass of wine. And there's nothing wrong with having a glass of wine. It's just the fact that if you're doing that all the time and you're doing it for the purpose of relaxation and numbing, then there's a problem. There's a problem when you're eating junk food because it's what comforts you or you say, I've had a bad day, therefore I'm going to have this chocolate cake. It's not that chocolate cake is bad for you to have on occasion, right? But if you're using it mm -hmm. to balance your emotions, then there's a problem. So what happens is then if you're constantly using what you eat and what you drink to balance your emotions, it actually creates the opposite effect because it prevents your body from producing the levels of serotonin that you need in your gut that's going to actually balance you out emotionally naturally. So you're keeping yourself in this state of fight or flight all the time. It, it tells your body that we have to be ready to fight. Therefore, we need to store cortisol. We need to create more of it and store it, which causes our body to store fat. And now because of doing that, now we have maybe we're overweight. Maybe we have high levels of stress. Maybe our blood pressure is higher. Now we're not eating very well. We're drinking too much. And it affects how we use our time and how much we're able to focus. We stay distracted. We stay in this, this clutter cycle where we're constantly going from emotional overload to physical just drain, right? And then because of that, sometimes we go into a space of spending money out of comfort. Now we're in financial overwhelm. And then we just become so overwhelmed and stressed that we just shut down because we, we can't, we don't have any other choice. Like you said, it's call it a day. I can't do this right now. And I've seen people shut down for a week, two weeks, a month because they just can't do it anymore. And then when they're like, you know, crap, I got to make some money. I got to do something. 
So they pick themselves up and they go right back into a space of, of physical clutter where they start collecting all this stuff that they think is going to be the magic pill to get them to manage their time and get them to focus. And they're not paying attention to how they feel and what's creating that. They're not paying attention to their emotions or what they're eating or what they're doing to take care of their body or what they're doing to take care of themselves just on an emotional level. And it's how we feel on the inside that drives how we perform. And it's all connected. The emotion, the energy, the time, and the focus, it all connects, all of it. What is the key to breaking free from the clutter cycle and into productivity flow, as yeah. you call it? So it's really just asking yourself some questions. You know, ask yourself how you feel throughout the day. You know, if you're doing something that you know isn't healthy for you or your body, ask yourself why. Say, what is it that I'm really trying to fix right now? So maybe you, you go for chocolate at the end of the day, you know, and you're like, I really want this chocolate bar. <laughs> and even though the sugar is going to make you crash later, you, you may say, well, you know what? I want this chocolate because this chocolate is going to make me feel really good. And then say, okay, well, why, why do I feel bad? So it's kind of digging in deeper and asking yourself, what do I feel I deserve? Instead of saying, what do I want? Say, what do I feel I deserve? And then that is usually where we find that there's an issue. It's in the belief of what you feel like you deserve or even can have. And if you sit there and you say, you know, I'm going to make $100,000 this year and ask yourself, sit with that for a second and say, how does that feel? Do I think, yeah, totally, I could do this. No problem. Or are you saying to yourself, I, I could never do that. I can't have that. Only other people get to have that. I don't get to have that. Then ask yourself, why? Why are you not able to have that? Who told you that you can't have that? And you start to dig in deeper and you see where the root of this stuff comes from. I had a client that she really had a hard time connecting with doing video in her business. And we had talked a lot about video marketing and how it allows people to really get to know you and see you for who you are, authentic, vulnerable, just be yourself. Don't try to be something that you're not. Just be you. You know, people connect with that. And, and try as she could, she just could not break through this barrier of doing video because to her, being on video made her so incredibly uncomfortable. And so when we tried to dig into that. We found out um, going backwards that she had a, a, a sibling um, growing up that had told her that she was fat and ugly. Nobody wanted to hear what she had to say. Just being a stinky brother, right? <laughs> no kind of bad, abusive intent there. Just being a brother. That's, this is what happens between siblings, right? And so it was enough to cause her to have a major block in the growth of her business. Major block. Just from hearing that one time. And so... But that was like... Long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> yes, yes, so long. And, and so and none of those things were true, you know? And um, so when we understood that, hey, this is where it came from, it wasn't anything that she needed to fix. It was just saying, oh, that's why I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> well, that's silly, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then she was able to, to do it because she realized that was just her brother's voice and it had nothing to do with reality. Sometimes we just need to understand where something came from. That's why it's so important to ask questions. Ask yourself questions. You can even just write them down, you know, and then, and then write down your answers. Sometimes it's just making that connection and having awareness around it that gives us enough to say, okay, I get it. I understand. This is what happened. That's silly. Let's move forward from this, right? And the thing is, is that it's, it's also important that you pay attention to how you're eating and how you're, you're moving your body on a regular basis. Because if you're not giving your body the fuel that it needs to be at its best, then you can't expect your brain to be functioning at its best. So if you really want to be productive, figure that part out, you know, eat healthier, make better choices. And the most important thing that you can do is to do what I call setting your GPS. And that is, you know, if you're going to get in your car and you're going to drive somewhere, you're going to type an address into your GPS so that you know where you're going, right? So mm -hmm. 
We don't live our lives this way though. Not most of us. And so we just kind of are floating through life. And it's essentially like, I'm, I'm going to go to this store and I'm getting in the car now. I'm going to go to the store because I want to go to the store. And you don't know what store you're going to. You're just driving around and going, well, eventually I'm going to run into a store, I think. And when I get there, I guess I'll go buy something. I don't know what I'm going to buy. That's how we live our lives. And instead, if you, if you figure out and you say to yourself, okay, well, what is it that I, what life am I actually trying to create here? What is it? What is my destination? And you figure out what that looks like. Then you can backtrack and actually start creating it. When I did that, I realized that, you know, I had clients that were, you know, one-to-one clients and I had a, a group that I was doing. <laughs> and I realized that I really enjoyed doing the group and I love doing one-to-one, but I had so many one-to-one clients that I felt burnt out. I was feeling emotionally drained. And I realized that on Fridays, I really wasn't as good of a coach as I was the rest of the week. And I didn't feel like that was fair to those clients. And I realized also that when I did uh, sessions in the later in the day, I wasn't as good of a coach as I was in the morning. And I realized too, that when I would go, go, go week to week to week to week, all the time, I would start to, after a couple of months, I would get burnt out and I would start to feel really drained. Like I needed to take some time off. And I said, okay, well, instead of just saying, this is how I feel, I'm going to do something about it. So what I did was I restructured all my programs and I set a limit and said, I'm only going to have eight one-to-one clients at any given time. I won't have more than that because I'm going to do two a day Monday through Thursday, I'm not ever going to work Fridays because on Fridays, I feel like I want to check out. So I just am I'm going to check out on Fridays. And so Monday through Thursday is when I'll work, but I'm only going to work until 2 p.m. Because after that, my energy is drained and I feel like I need to recover. So I'm not going to get anything productive done during that time. So it's a waste of my time to be using that as working time. So I'm going to work from nine to two. So I can have a really strong morning routine and feel like I start my day out well and and relaxed so that when I go to work, I'm already really in the middle of my day. And that feels really good, even though it's early in the morning and I'll work from nine to two. I'll do that Monday through Thursday. And you know what? I'm only going to work the first three weeks of the month. And then if, you know, there's a fourth week every, every month, and then sometimes we have a fifth week, I'm just going to take those off and that'll be vacation time for me. Even if I just sit at home. Because that's time that I need to recover my energy so I can keep being the best that I can for me and for my clients. And so that's what I did. And I restructured my whole life around it. And it's worked beautifully. Most people don't ask themselves any questions. They don't ask themselves how they're feeling. So they, and they don't set their GPS so they don't know where they're going. When you figure that stuff out, everything changes. Yeah. What have you learned from business as a whole? Oh, gosh. <laughs> what have I learned from business as a whole? <laughs> um, you know, I think this, this really does go back to the productivity is rooted in emotion. I realized that, you know, people try to keep their business lives and their personal lives separate a lot. And I realized that it's really hard to do that. And it creates a lot more effort than is necessary. And I don't put any section uh, between my, my personal life and my business life, really, because I'm always me. I don't show up as a different version of me ever. And what I found is that that's really helped me grow my business because the people who follow me and my work and what I do, they, they see me as I actually am. You know, I don't hold things back. I'm not afraid to share things, even if something's bad. Even if something's negative, I'm not afraid to talk about it because I want them to know that everything they're going through is a hundred percent normal and it's okay. You know, it's okay. And so when I say, Hey, I'm having a rough week this week and this is how I'm handling it, the people appreciate that. So I, I don't put any separation. I don't create two different personalities. One that's the real me and one that's the, the on air me, right? It's just me. It's always me. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's really what people want to connect with. Uh-huh. If you could rerun the first year of your business, what would you definitely not what do? What would I definitely not do? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, the first year in my business, I was married to my first husband. He was bipolar. 
And um, I was very stressed. I was in a state of depression and I was going through a breakdown of my entire life that I had built for myself up to that point. And yet I was coaching others and helping people through their problems. And I was having so many problems, so many problems. And so I don't know that there is anything that I would change. And the reason that I say that is because it was that experience that gave me the the fuel really for what my business has become. It's what encouraged me to get out there and do something different, leave the husband who was bipolar and emotionally abusive, get out of that relationship, get my kids out of there, you know, and, and build a life for myself, even if it was hard, even if it was very difficult and challenging, that it was better than where I was and that it helped me realize how strongly my emotional state affected my ability to show up in my business. And those were such valuable lessons, priceless, priceless lessons. So I can't say that I would change any of it. I mean, everything we do in our business is an an evolution, right? And so I'll say that the, that first year, it gave me what I needed to continue evolving. What is one thing no one knows about you? I don't know because I tell everybody everything. (laughs) I'm an open book. I don't, I don't really um, hold stuff back, but um, I'll tell you something that a lot of people don't know about me. And that is that um, when I was very little, I taught myself how to read when I was four and I've always, always loved books. And my mom had taught me my, um, my letters and my sounds when I was four years old. And this is before kindergarten, you know, you start kindergarten when you're five. And I, um, I, she bought me all these Dr. Seuss books. There was like a subscription or something back then. And so I had these Dr. Seuss books and I started putting the letters and the sounds that I knew together. And she said, I walked into the kitchen one day of this book and said, mommy, listen. And I just started reading and she was just like, what? And by the time I was six years old, I started writing my own stories and I wrote all these little short stories um, from when I was six years old on. And by the time I was in seventh grade, I remember I had an assignment to write a short story and my English teacher um, held me up after class and asked me where I'd copied it from. And I said, I didn't copy this. And she said, you didn't write this. This you, I know you didn't write this. Tell me where you, where you copied this from. And I said, I, I didn't, I'm sorry. And she called my mom and my mom said, no, I saw her sit at the table and write this out. She didn't copy it. This is her own original work. And when I was in this space with my ex-husband and I was in this state of depression and emotional abuse and stress and trying to balance out my emotions and his all at the same time and, and raise two babies I, I wrote a, a fiction novel. And um, one of the things that I was really worried about was uh, getting it published. And, you know, I started reaching out to all these literary agents and I actually had three offers from different literary agents. And one of them was a very, very famous wrote the book on literary agents. <laughs> and I was really excited about it. And I ended up dropping that entire project because he had asked me to make a couple of changes. And I was in the middle of a divorce at that point, And I was so stressed out about everything else. I just let it go. And I never did anything with it. And I ended up self-publishing later. And, you know, I sell a couple books here and there every year, but nothing to speak of. And the reason that I, I do, I talk about that piece, but not necessarily the, the rest of it leading up to it. And a lot of people don't know about all of it. But um, I do talk about that because my life could have gone in a totally different direction. I'm, I'm actually a really good writer and I love writing stories. I love fiction and that I could have gone in that direction, but it wasn't the right path for me. And so I can look at that and say I failed or I can look at that and say I made a choice to go down a different path. And that's absolutely what I did. Let's talk about your business. Tell us more about it. Well, um, my business is, um, it's all under my name. So it's Angela Kristen Taylor. Our new website uh, is AngelaKristenTaylor.com. It's not up yet, but it is a coming soon page. 
where people can go and they can book a productivity breakthrough session with me there. Um, but the, the business is specifically for entrepreneurs, people who are, you know, building a business and they want to grow their business and also create a real sense of balance and flow in their lives. And so they're usually people who are tired of being stressed out, tired of saying they're going to do something and then not doing it, uh, feeling like they're not meeting their goals and they're just not sure why. They know what they should be doing, but they're just not doing it. And they just, they can't make themselves. They can't force themselves. And it doesn't matter what punishment or reward they put in front of themselves. It's just not happening. And they're, they're, they're tired. They're overwhelmed. They're done. And they just, they just want to succeed. They're hungry for it. And so those are the people that I work with. And I'll say that, um, you know, as far as what, uh, offerings we have. We have our one-to-one coaching, which right now is full, <laughs> but we do, um, I do have eight spots that I offer, you know, at any given time, but those, they are, they are full right now. And then we are getting ready to launch our new group program, uh, which is productive flow essentials. And that's going to be a four month program that goes through every one of those four elements of productivity. So we're going to introduce a new element um, each one of the four months. We're going to set our GPS together and uh, it's working with me. I have a health coach in place. I have a, um, a hypnotherapist in place who um, specializes in uh, the, oh God, I can't remember that, RRT, RTT, RTT, Rapid Transformational Therapy. Um and then I also have a support pod mentor in there to support the small groups within the larger group. And that is going to be starting coming up here in December. So uh, we're really excited to get that off the ground and, and start our first group with that for Productive Flow Essentials. And so that's that's what we have coming up. Where can we find um, It's going to be program. at AngelaKristenTaylor.com. I'd say for anyone who is interested in learning more about that, Go ahead and go to the website and book a productivity breakthrough session. That's free one-to-one -one time with me, and and we can talk about the program. And uh, that page, though, will be up probably within the next few weeks. Um, but until it is, you can just schedule a breakthrough session with me right there at AngelaKristenTaylor.com. Thank you. There will be more from Angela in a moment. If you are listening to this on a podcasting platform and you are encouraged by Angela's journey, please go to our website at onlinesuccessjourney.com. The site has tons of audio clips from hundreds of successful entrepreneurs, guests, journeys, all there to help you find a path to your own online success journey. The site offers exclusive members-only content and you can join absolutely free and be part of this amazing online success community today. Check it out. That's onlinesuccessjourney.com. Now, Angela, I would love for you to share more with my sure, audience absolutely. if you are up for it. Thank you. Do you like Both. to watch movies or read books? <laughs> I, I, I love reading books. And if I find a good movie, I want to know if they have a book available so I can read that too. Tell us what is your favorite book that has some relevance oh, to being an So many good ones. So, so many good ones. Um, gosh, I have so many here. I'm just looking at my bookshelves. Um, one of my favorites that I'm reading right now is What Happened to You? And it's by Dr. Bruce Perry and Oprah Winfrey. And it reads like a conversation between the two of them. And what I love about that is that it helps people connect their past experiences, especially in childhood, to what's going on with them today. So it's very relevant to the work that I do in integrative productivity coaching. If your business was down to its last $100, Invested. how would you invest it? Mm. Wow, $100. Um I think the biggest investments that I make in my business, especially if there is no money. So thinking back in terms of the beginning of my business, when there really wasn't much money to invest, I invested my time and I used my time instead of money. So I would say what I would do with that money is I would invest it in maybe a, a system or a support, something that would help me. Um, reach more people in a more um, structured way. So maybe an email software or something like that. I mean, I have these things now, but if I, if I was down to a hundred dollars and I had none of that stuff um, and I would invest my time into reaching people one-to-one, -one. I think that's the best way to build and grow your business when you're starting from nothing. What 
what is the best business book you have ever read? Best business book. This one is, it's designed for real estate agents, but um, it's called The Seven Levels of Communication. And it's by Michael Mayer, M-A-H-E-R. And it's all about how, how you communicate with others creates a referral-based business so that you really don't have to spend money on, on marketing, that people are marketing your business for you because of how you make them feel when they're around you. And I love his book and I've met Michael and I spent lots of time talking to Michael and he's just an amazing person on his own. And the book that he wrote, he wrote is just, it, it's incredible. I've read it several times and it's a tiny little book. You could read it in a day. It took me four hours to read it cover to cover. It's a great book. If you are going to keep a note to yourself in your handbag every day. A uh, note to myself, he said. I, you know, it's funny because I have these little notes all over my entire office. And so I have one that says, I can and I will. I have another one that says, courage is taking those first steps to your dream, even if you can't see the path ahead. I have another one that says, inspire. It's a verb to encourage somebody to greater effort, enthusiasm, or creativity to awaken a particular feeling in somebody. I have another one that says, I want every girl to know that her voice can change the world. And that's just what's in front of me right now. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, thank you. Do you feel like you succeeded? Um, or like I you're feel like I'm constantly evolving. So I know I have succeeded. And I know that I have a lot more that I can do. And I have a plan and a structure in place for doing it. And I'm doing it every day. Would you ever I don't think so. When I think of what it would mean to retire, I just feel like my business is going to continue to evolve. I feel like I will have less of a daily role in it. And I feel like I will be spending more time writing and speaking. And I'm already on my way to starting that transition. So it's, it's pretty exciting, but it's, it's not about stopping. It's just about you know, when you're passionate about something and you know it's it's your purpose, it's why you're here, it's just what you do. It's part of who you are. And you can schedule a productivity breakthrough session. So if you have that link on your website, then I suggest that they go to your website. Um, I know you said it was online success journey. And uh, then they can go there to get to my site and then book their productivity breakthrough session. Happy to talk to them. And I will say I do have a lengthy form there, but that form gives me all their background information so that when we get on that call, I can dive right into the root of their exact unique problem right away. We don't have to go through a whole get to know you process to get to that point. I already know where we need to dig in right when I get on the call. Angela, it's been great to have you here Thank to you share so your much. online I success journey it. with us. Remember, success is a journey. Don't wait. Let's start the journey. Patience and Angela. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to Patience and her guest and want you to know there are hundreds of episodes available at OnlineSuccessJourney.com. Patience would like to thank you for listening to the podcast, and she has a free gift for you on her website, including an audio compilation of her guests' best tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. Additionally, there are special clips of over 250 episodes that have never aired on the podcast, and they're only available to members of the online success journey. Check the website and click on Join Now to get free and instant access. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed on your favorite platform to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review the podcast at iTunes and other sites. We appreciate your help and your willingness to share your journey. One last thing. If you're feeling a bit lost or overwhelmed on your own journey, patience can help. Check out her course on clarity while you're at the website. Finding clarity is a great way to get back on the right path. On behalf of patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.